Okay. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Um, so really quick, I was just going to talk about the ministry itself. Um, but I kind of wanted to give my testimony first and then kind of explain how that led me to the ministry um, with my mom. So uh, right out of school, right out of graduating UNC Charlotte, uh, I kind of jumped head first into my career. Um, I'm really, really big with automotive. So anybody that knows me personally, they know I'm a, I'm a car guy. If it's a car, motorcycle, that that's me. Um, and I love helping people. So I'm like, you no, know, auto industry, car sales, that, that's fine. So I hop into there. Um, I get promoted relatively quickly to where I'm a sales trainer and I'm managing 20 plus people at a time. So everything is going fine career wise. Uh, my relationship at the time, I had my daughter. Um, and I'm loving being a father. I mean, that was the the best gift that I've that I've that I've ever had. I was enjoying it. It was it was growing me up as a man. It was showing me different parts of myself that I didn't even know was in there, you know. So that was going that was going good as well. So we fast forward to 2020, right before COVID hit, right before. Um, and I switched I switched I switched jobs, and I was at a at a new job, and I had an opportunity to get a promotion. And this was doing um, like aftermarket things. So like putting wheels on cars and painting them different colors, just customizing cars. And that's always been my passion. So I had the opportunity. And while I was doing it, uh, some of the older guys, and some of the older managers were telling me, like, you know, you need to be careful with this promotion. And I'm like, be careful. What, what do I need to be careful about? And they're like, you know, a lot of people don't want you to have this promotion. So there might be some backlash if you take it. And I'm like. You know, it's a, it's a promotion. I'm bringing the company money, uh, you know, and you guys don't know. But this is, you know, my passion. Like, y'all sound crazy. And they're like, all right, we just want to give it to you. So I'm like, OK, whatever. I take the job. Um, So we fast forward maybe a month after that, I get fired. For no, I've never been written up. Anything bad happened. I get fired. And I'm like, wow. At the same time. My relationship with my daughter's mother was going sideways to where me and her had to split. And the biggest thing with me with my daughter is I wanted her to grow up in a, a two parent household. And now that wasn't happening. So now it's like man, I have to deal with that. Then I had a couple friends kind of turn their back on me when I needed them the most because I was going through both of those situations. So I got all of these things happening at once. It's like just a rock hit. Everything just happened at once. Now, mind you, this is during COVID, and this is the first COVID where we had curfews. We couldn't go outside. It was social distancing. Um, so now I don't have a job. I'm trying to job hunt, but people aren't doing interviews because we can't go in person. Now we can't even go outside. So now I'm struggling trying to find a job. With my daughter, it's pulling on my emotional strings because I'm not around her how I was, and I'm not around her to, to, to continue that bond I was building with her, you know, um, and I've always been the strong friend out of my friend group, you know. So now I'm calling those certain people to vent and talk to. Nobody picking up the phone. Nobody's really helping me how I was helping them. And being that strong friend, sometimes you notice that you are the strong person. People can't pick you up how you can pick them up or give them advice how you can give it to them. You know, sometimes it's, it's not reciprocated. So all of this is happening at the same time, and I go into a depressive state. I've never been depressed in my life until this happened. So now I'm, I'm struggling really bad. I'm struggling emotionally, mentally, uh, physically. I got out of shape really bad. It was, a, it was a rough time. It was a rough time. And no matter what I did, I couldn't, I couldn't fix it. And for people who don't know what depression is, depression is like having your worst day every single day. And no matter what you can, no matter what you do, try to talk to, turn to, nothing solves it. It just keeps happening over and over and over. So one day I'm in the mirror and I'm like, I start questioning God. I'm like, why? You know, I wasn't doing anything bad. I didn't treat anybody wrong. I wasn't out here stealing or robbing. I wasn't doing anything wrong. You know, why? And God answered quick. Guy answered really quick. He said, because you're failing the test. And I'm like, failing the test? What do you mean I'm failing the test? He's like, you failing the test. And I'm like, failing the test. So he said, 
everything that you're doing, that you were doing, you didn't seek me before you did it. You were moving in your own mind, in your own flesh, in your own logic. And I'm like, but everything is, is going good. I'm, you know, I was getting new apartments and houses every month. I was getting promotions in my job. I had cars and motorcycles. My dog, I had everything. Well, I wasn't, what was I doing wrong? So he said, when you had that job promotion, I was trying to talk to you, but you ignored me. I gave you the warning. I told you that promotion might not be what you want, but you acted out of your own flesh and you took it anyway. You didn't seek me. When you had these issues going on with your friends and uh, your relationship at the time, there were plenty of red flags that I showed you and you ignored all of them because you were moving within yourself and within your flesh. You didn't seek me. And I'm like, he said, you forgot me. You forgot about me. You left me. So I took it from me. I took it from me. And at that point, I'm like, wow. So the whole time I thought I was doing what I wanted to do, but I wasn't moving and operating in what he wanted me to do. So that moment was like a, a, a wake up call for me, because, again, everything that I was trying to do, I couldn't fix it. I couldn't. Everything I knew, to, I never had a problem getting a job. I never had relationship issues, nothing. And I was doing everything that I knew how to do, but I wasn't seeking him. So now I had a, a, a refreshed state. I had a refreshed mind because, again, God will do things to let you know that you, you have to depend on him. You can't do this by yourself. The last thing he told me, he said, the reason why you can't figure out a solution is because you're fighting the battle. That's not your battle. You're trying to fight a fight. That's not even your fight. That's my fight. But you didn't give it to me. You tried to do it. That's why you can't figure it out. That's why you're Jesus, mentally fatigued. Jesus, That's why all this stuff is happening to you. That's why. Because you didn't give it to me. Give it to me and see what happened. Mm. So I switched my mindset. At that point. God allowed me to to see that this is a test. You got to pass the test. And everything that was happening to to me, I was playing victim. Mm. I didn't do nothing wrong. And I was being a good person and I was doing all of these things. I don't deserve this. Why, why would this happen? No. God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. He was mm. building me. Mm. So now when I go back and I'm looking at this, now I know how to operate through nine to five in corporate America. And I know what to look out for with certain terms and, and certain things. Now I know how to navigate when it comes to personal relationships and friends and, and being a father. Now I know the, the red flags to look out for. Now I know how to pick and choose where I go, who I go to, who I devote my time to, who I let in, who I don't let in. It was a lesson. All of this was a lesson. Now I'm stronger than ever. I feel like there's nothing I haven't been. You, you can't do anything to me. I've already been through it. God and already showed me. He took me through there. Now I have now I have the armor on. Now I'm, like I said, I'm a car guy, so I'm built for a tough now. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing you can do because he took me through it. And not only did he take me through it, he let me learn the lesson. So now we fast forward to um to, to now. And uh, me and my mama are really close. We're very close. We talk all the time. Um and I used to tell her things that were going on in the world. Like, my, you would believe, like, my friends, we having a debate. These people out here trying different religions and they turn away from Christianity and they believe in themselves more than God and they want to do this. And every time I would, you know, have those conversations with her, she would just look at me so astounded. Like, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Like, that's really what's going on with these young adults. And I'm like, yes, like, they are, we're lost, like, very lost of what's going on out here. So she explained to me that, you know, how God was leading her to do some type of youth ministry. So um, we came together and we came up with our, our youth forum or discussion forum that we have that is called uh, Talk with Elder Harris. So we host this every second and fourth Tuesday from 730 to 9 um, on a platform that's similar to Zoom. Um, it's called Free Conference Call. And if you guys want more information, I'll definitely give it to you. Um, to where we open the door for young adults to come in and discuss, you know, daily issues daily problems and how to find faith-based solutions to those, to those problems. Um, and again, our purpose is to encourage God and lead young adults into a fully developed relationship with Jesus. Um, they'll discover their God given purpose and make an impact on others in their day-to-day -day lives. And our mission scripture is Jeremiah um, 29 and 11, which says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans to prosper you and not harm you plans to give you a hope and not a future. 
And that scripture resonates with me because, again, with my personal story, that scripture is even saying the Lord plans for you to prosper, not to harm. you, mm -hmm. But that's his plan for you. So if you're not open and you can't hear his plan and you're not seeking his plan, you will get harmed. You won't prosper because you're moving within your own self, your own flesh. And that's not how it's designed to be. Then the last part says it plans to give you a hope in the future. There's no way I could have got out of that depression if I didn't have some type of hope. If I didn't believe in something stronger than myself, because myself, my flesh, I did everything and it didn't work. Nothing worked. But having that hope in something else, having that hope in God, that's what got me out of there. That's what has me talking to y'all right now at this moment, because wow. I was in bad shape wow. and I shook all of that because of him. I trusted him. I had that hope in the future. My future looking bright. <laughs> my future looking bright. And it's all because I, I gave that to him. I started trusting God. All you have to do is give it to him and walk with him. And yeah. that's what I try to explain to other young adults that come to the forum or whoever I run into, you know, just day to day basis. But that's what our forum is designed to do for, for young adults to come in, ask those questions wherever you confuse, gain clarity. My mom, she does a great job at giving it to you from the, the spiritual side. It's Bible based. She's going to tell you everything out of that Bible. There's nothing personal. She's coming from the Bible and she's going to give you scripture and she's going to break it down to you in the spiritual. Me, I'm going to come for you from more of a, a person to person aspect. Also, I can I have the gift to, to, to explain things in a way to where they make sense and they resonate to everyone. So she'll explain it spiritually and I will make that make sense. Because, again, sometimes uh, as young adults, scripture is confusing. You know, or young adults go to church and they don't really receive the message because it's not in a way that, that their ear can hear it or the scripture is not read in a way where their their ear can hear it. So I can kind of explain it in a different way. And they're like, oh, OK, that's what that means. Or, oh, OK, I, I get it now. So it's just a safe space for young adults to come and really get fed. Um, and that's what makes me and her. That's that gives us that gas to keep going because people come every second or fourth Tuesday. It's flooded. They're in there and you can tell that they're hungry, they're thirsty, they need it. They need it. And if I can provide that to the community, if I can give back and reach out and share my testimony and draw people closer to Christ, then I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna that's 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 what I'm signing up for. And it's and it's and it's a real good turnout. So um I know I'm going on a little bit, but that's our ministry, that's my testimony, and that and that's what we're all about with Let's Talk with Elder Harris. Amen. Thank you, Sean. Yep, I'm still here. Okay, so we'll let you go and then we'll open up the floor. Awesome. Well, first off, Sean, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your testimony. Mm -hmm. That inspired me to share my testimony as well. And I would love to be a part of your Bible study the next time that you have it. Um, and I would love to get that flyer. Um, I think what you're doing is truly, truly incredible. And is I can see it on you that God is moving in and through you. And it's touching many lives of what you're doing. Just that sincerity to be in that humbleness to go and help others. God is really moving through that. Um, that to me resonates so much with me because for me, my testimony is kind of similar. Um, a lot of things that happened in my life to where I had to trust and put my complete and total faith in God. And even sometimes when I had those jo jo uh, Jonah moments where I wanted to run from God, he would always bring me back to him and to the purpose that he had for me. Um, for example, just to kind of introduce myself for anybody who doesn't know me, I am first a follower of Christ. I am a husband, a father, a son, and, you know, just a artist. Um, I, I love anything that involves writing and art. Um, most people call me a poet or a spoken word artist or a rapper or hip hop artist. And so there's many names like that, but, um, I just flow in whatever God is giving me and telling me to do, uh, that has not always been easy because in my flesh, you know, my flesh wants me to do the opposite of what God is telling me to do. But I know as a follower of Christ and in my spirit, it cries out to him. And so every time that I have ran from him when I was when I was younger and I was in church and people would, would tell me, you're going to be a preacher. And I was like, whoa, you know, like that always would sink in my chest because when I heard the word preacher or, or preaching in that format, when it came to me, my first thought you know, was, oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, there's no way I could do that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough to do that. I don't I don't know scripture as as, as well as I, I see, you know, the pastors that I've seen, you know, know scripture. I don't I, I don't I don't know if I can preach as well as as, as they can preach and, and things like that. And it was almost like I always had those those Mo Moses moments when he was told to go speak to the Pharaoh. 
And Moses is like, well, you know, I got this right here. And, and, you know, come up with every single excuse. This guy said, I have an answer for that. And so I didn't know, you know, that God had already had an answer for that at the time when I was young age and I was being told this. I was just thought, OK, this can't be me. And so fast forward, I started to get more deep into poetry. I started to get more deeper into spoken word and I started to actually perform spoken word at my church, at Friendship Chapel Baptist Church and in other various places. And, you know, it took me even to this moment and even, you know, to just recently to realize that God was working out my purpose for me this entire time. Uh, when I was, every time that I went and did spoken word and poetry, I never looked at it as it was him using me to speak to other people, to minister to other people. I never saw it that way. I always saw it as, oh, you know, maybe I'm an activist or, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, help, you know, heal people. I'm trying to 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 give people uh, um, um, an escape from their day-to-day -day lives. But God was saying, no, I have a full on purpose for this. And it wasn't until I was speaking with my wife one day and she looked at me and I told her, I was like, you know, people were telling me, you know, I, used, I, I should be a pastor one day and things like that. Uh, Cause we were at an event and somebody heard a spoken word that I did and they came up to me afterwards and it was like, oh my gosh, it touched me so deep. You should be a pastor. And I, and I was like, there's that word again. So I, you know, immediately got, it. I'm talking to my wife about it. And I kind of jokingly said like, yeah, you know, like, you know, yeah, they told me I wanted to be a pastor, but look how that turned out. And she just turns to me and she looks at me and she says, Sean, that's what you are. Wow. You realize that you are preaching every time that you allow yourself and you give yourself to God, every time that you are on that stage, every time that it doesn't matter if you are behind a pulpit or if you are in, in, in front of a stadium or if you are in front of a, a, an audience of five, it doesn't matter. Every time that you are speaking, when you allow yourself to be used by God, guess what? His, mo his message is flowing in and through you and he is moving in and through you. And I didn't realize that that's what, he was calling me to do the whole time. And it's funny because God, you know, he winks at our ignorance, right? We might think that he's telling us to do one thing, but really he's telling us what he sees already is going to happen. And we just need to trust him and fall into that place. We might think, oh, God is telling me to, to you know, do this. And I don't know if I have the the, the ability. I don't know if I have the, the accreditations. I don't know if I, 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 you know, I didn't go to school for this. It doesn't matter. If God tells you to do something, I guarantee you trust him and just do it. It really is that simple. And it didn't really make sense to me until I got older. And so for anybody who, you know, is is on that same journey, on that same walk, who have been through that, just know, as Brother Sean has said earlier, he knows the plans that he has for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a future. And so that's what I've learned as, as you know, is that this is my ministry. And, you know, as, as I've learned that, um, I've started to learn and see how God is moving whenever I, you know, me and my wife, we do poetry. Whenever we are doing a spoken word piece, I've seen how God move. I've seen people transform in the crowd and turn to Christ. I've seen tears in people's eyes because it reached to the depths of their soul. And I look back and I say, that's not me. So people ask me, how did you write that? Or where'd you come up with that? That's not me. It is not me. Oh God. And all the glory goes back to him. Every single word that comes out of my mouth, I always pray that it's pleasing in his sight. And I always have faith that it is because I know that me just being up there, he's called me to be up there. And he asked me to do it, not because of anything that I've done. It has nothing to do with, with anything that I've done. It had nothing to do, you know, he didn't just choose Moses and Abraham. He didn't choose David just because, you know, they, they did something extraordinary. You know, he didn't wait for David to slay the Goliath before he chose them and said, no, I choose you. As a matter of fact, there's some of us right now that feel like we've done something so dastardly, so unforgivable that we have yet to forgive ourselves in it. But God is saying, no, I forgive you. And so he's telling you to turn back from Saul and become Paul because he chose you. Even when you were doing the complete opposite, even when you were running away from God completely, he still chose you and said, I need you to go spread the gospel, spread my message. And so I would definitely want to leave you there with that because it leads to so many open doors when you walk in his purpose and you truly align himself with, with his purpose and that he has for you. He opens all of the doors. Everything else falls into place. And that also comes in your own spiritual walk and relationship with Christ as well. So in those times, not only was he giving me poetry and spoken word to speak to other people, but then he would turn it back on me those same times that I needed. What do I mean? I mean that he would literally mirror the reflection of my poetry pieces and spoken words back to me when I felt like I was, I was falling away from him. He would remind me and say, hey, 
Remember when this when this was written? Yeah, I might have written this not only for other people, and I had you write this for other people and speak it, but this is also for you in those times where you need it as a reminder to get back up and crawl back to God and go back to God in that time of need. And so I'm I'm very thankful and I'm very blessed, but I, I always want to hammer home that it does start first with the relationship of turning back to Christ and turning away from my sins and saying and knowing that he has always been there. Brother Sean's testimony, he said that he had felt like, God, what did I do? What have I done? You know, and I've often felt like that so many times, not only in the in the sense of what have I done to deserve this, but also in the sense of what did I do to 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 not deserve this? You know, the, the opportunities that I might have missed or I felt like I had, you know, um, uh, missed out on or was taken away from me. And God said, no, I had to build you up. I had to strengthen you to get you back to where I needed you to be, because those opportunities weren't for you. I had something better for you. And so. Part of, of of those open doors that have led me from my ministry was he allowed me to be able to give back because I, I remember I was just I was so blessed and I was so thankful and I was talking to God and I was praying. I was like, Lord, I wish there was a way that I could I could, you know, give back to other people. I wish there was a way that I could I could, you know, help other people. And again, again, God links at our ignorance because we might think we have our own understanding and we lean on our own understanding. We think, oh, yeah, OK, I have a plan. Here's my idea. And so I remember. I had this idea of how I can give back to other people. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a youth show and I'm gonna have, you know, all these, you know, people come and I'm gonna talk to them. And God said, nope, I have other plans. He shut that down. And what he said was, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and I want you to speak to the young adults, young teens, ages eight to 18. And I just want you to go and be there for them. And I remember at the time, I had an opportunity that fell in my lap and I had never taught before. And, and somebody reached out to me from an organization known as SUSO, a stand up speak out. And it's about, you know, uh, really uh, it's about uh, sexual abuse and violence prevention. But it's really about talking to young women and men about not only what they're going through and how to understand themselves, but how to use their creativity, their arts, their poetry, their writing, their drawing to be able to express themselves and be able to understand themselves and the world around them. And I had no idea that that's where God was placing me until I got the call. And I didn't even know who the number was. I just remember answering. It was like, hey, you're, you're here for the interview for this teaching role. And I was like, teaching role? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and, and so I did it. And it was like, well, tell me, what would you do, you know, with the youth? And so, I, you know, I, I answered all the questions. And then they, they emailed me back the next day and said, hey, we would love to bring you on board. And I had no idea what it consisted of. I had no no lesson plan, no anything. And I remember praying to God and I was um, uh, I had a, a, a amazing, amazing co-teacher that was with me as well, um, who, who was also the leader of, of that organization. Uh, we ended up doing a, a program called Creating Youth Voices for Change. And I remember when we was trying to come up with the lesson plan, I was like, very like, OK, I don't know what to do. I was you know anxious. I was nervous. And I remember Ty, who was who was also my co-teacher, she looked at me and she just said, hey, let's pray. And we prayed. And I heard the verse voice of the father say, hey, just go in there and just rely on me. Mm. Like, plan, no nothing. I said, OK. First day that I got to meet these young students, these brilliant, young, amazing minds. God laid it on my heart that they had been going through so much because even though they had not been victims of violence, they have witnessed it. They have been a part of environments that have not been the easiest. And they were looking for hope. They were looking for something. And I had no idea that God was using me and other people to be able to lead, provide that hope in him and help guide them back to him. Because in those times, you're in those vulnerable moments where you have no idea how to express yourself in your emotions, how to get things out. Mm -hmm. And so you know, you're in school at eight hours, eight to 10 hours a day, you get home, you have homework, and then you, you, you know, you go through all of the life struggles, everything that they had going on at home, and then have to do it all over again. There was no place that they can express themselves. And so I remember when we first got there, the creating youth voices of change aspect of it was, I started to ask people and it was like, hey, I love to do this art. I love to do that art. And then I asked them, how does that help you get through, you know, your daily life? And they had no clue. And so I got to share my testimony of how poetry and spoken word got to help me in my life when I felt down, when I felt like there was no hope in my life, or I felt like I was in a dark place. And then God told me to write, you know, through other people. You know, I remember when my, my grandma, who was my best friend, she passed away. I was depressed for two weeks 
my uncle and, and uh, my uncle Greg, he came in to my room. He gave me a notebook and said, hey, you might not have anything to say right now. You might feel like the world is crumbling, crumbling down around you, but just write. And that's when I really just started to write all of my feelings down. And when I started to share that with the young students, they realized, wow, there's another option. I can use my creativity and my voice. And during that eight week program, we sat and we worked with them. We worked with them on not only how to overcome, you know, anxiety and depression and fear, not only how to to, you know, um, communicate with one another so that we can end bullying and end violence, but also how to put their creativity into their voices that really can make a difference and a positive impact on the world. And so by the end of that eight week program, the students were creating art and were showcasing that art in front of hundreds of people that they that also touched other people's lives and that also was able to really make an impact on the world. And so it's amazing how, you know, if you allow God to just steer the ship, he would take you in so many different directions. Um, I know I'm running low on time and I know I'm going uh, way overboard, probably. But, um, you know, I just wanted to uh, say this. One of the things that it also did is being in the arts um, has allowed me to uh, be able to, you know, see what is needed as far as the gap, as far as arts. Um, in 2020, when the pandemic happened, a lot of people, you know, you had really nothing to do but sit at home, really, you know. And so people were always looking for something to do. People were always looking for, hey, what's what's going on in the areas and things like that. The only problem was with uh, social media algorithms, there was no way to really find out what was going on, what events were taking place. And so you had people who wanted to showcase their arts at open mics. They wanted to express themselves. They wanted to to get their, you know, I like to call art as therapy, right? It's a sense of therapy in it. And so they would go to these places to get their therapy, but there was nowhere they felt that they could go or they didn't know about those places. So God laid it on my heart to create an app known as Tap In that literally taps people into the events that are happening in their area. And so we not only focus on helping and promoting events that's in that area, but we also promote artists that are in the local area as well. And so we help market and push those events on our social media platforms as well as the app itself. And we also wanted to do something to where this is something that we're not trying to necessarily make money from. We just wanted to help our community and help those who are event organizers. And so as an event organizer, if you create an event on the app you and sell tickets, you keep 100% of those ticket sales. We don't take any money from the seller. We just wanted to provide a platform that, you know, was, you know, easy to use and something that benefits everybody, a one-stop shop for all artists to be able to be fully themselves without the algorithm. And so, and, I, and I'll be honest, part of my testimony also is I have no coding background. I went to school for technical writing, so I got to be around coding, but I had no background. So when people ask me, how did you create an app? God, <laughs> that's the answer. God, he let <laughs> And I trusted him because at first I was like, in my logical mind, I'm thinking, I don't have any experience in coding. I don't know how to code or develop an app. Yeah, I've seen it before, but that's different between writing it and seeing it and learning the language. And God said, nope, you just do everything that I tell you to do. And so I would sit there and I would pray and I would listen and God would tell me to do whatever he told me to do each and every step of the way. And that's how it was able to come about. And so I share all of that because all of that is part of my testimony wow. and it's all I continue to do this. And even this conversation right here and being a part of this on this call has been a reminder to continue to walk with God, continue to trust him with all of my heart and continue to never lean on my own understanding because faith is really a powerful thing. We live in a world right now where they try to get you to faith. They say, oh, it's, it's this and this and that and that, you know, and that's why a lot of people are falling away because you see so many people who are being, you know, uh, uh, judged or they're telling, being told this is the way, this is the way. And they're, they're missing that element of faith, of being faithful and knowing that Christ died for your sins. Christ literally gave up his life for you. And you need to have faith in that because faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I can encourage each and every one of you continue on with the faith and continue to be faithful towards him. Amen. Amen. That's, I, mean, I don't even know what to say. This is awesome. 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 <laughs> I think about Sean. Sean, do you mind turning your camera on? Different views. Um, you, you guys, y'all made Jeremiah, and both of y'all talked about Jeremiah 29 and 11. Y'all just made that live tonight. Um, and God says, you know, he has some plans for you. But I think about the storms that you went through 
you know, you both talked about depression and, you know, going through how God just took you through and just brought you here to this disappointed time. This is a, a divinely appointed time. So I just thank God for both of you. What can we do? And I'm asking because my niece called me last night and um, here we go. The school just starting and she was so upset and a 14 year old and a 16 year old was killed um, and with school just starting. What can we do, um, Sean Harris and William Harris, to help these young men in the community from going down like the bad, the, the road that's not destined for them? If I go first to answer that? Sure. Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to, to say um, I believe very much in, in prayer and doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Faith without works is dead and vice versa. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But I say that because, you know, um, even though we are doing, never stop praying. Because even though, you know, we are doing, it's that prayer that's really getting us through and that faith in God that's really pushing things through. Um, there are so many programs out there. And I say this also, you know, um, don't allow pride or, or ego or don't be ashamed to ask for help. Because there are resources and there are programs that are out there that are that are willing to help. And sometimes, um, you know, and I'm I'm somebody who who can attest to this, you know, our children might not want to be a part of those programs because we're like, oh, you no, know, might look at it as, oh, you know, this is for people that, you know, are at risk youth or, you know, um, I wish I could be at, in my, uh, you know, with my friends program or be in sports. And, you know, back then, really, all I knew was sports programs that would keep me out of trouble. Right. And so like football, basketball, being in those types of, of, of environments where there's that camaraderie and I can really be amongst, you know, other people. But, you know, the world that we are living in right now, the things that are continuously changing, as you just mentioned, people are dying and, and our children are dying. And so it's like, well, what can we do? You know, and even though I might not have the definitive answer, I do know that, you know, there are those resources like SUSO, Stand Up, Speak Out, even though it is for, you know, sexual abuse and, and, and violence prevention, you know, that, that you know, the whole organization is built around that. Creating Youth Voices for Change is for anyone. And so they normally have those twice a year. They're actually starting to do it three times a year. They're starting to, they just did a summer program uh, that was eight weeks. And it's normally, you know, at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, but they just added the summer that, you know, the, that was eight weeks as well. And so, you know, um, I can definitely plug you into to SUSO resources for creating youth voices for change. But there are also, you know, um, ways in which we can get in our schools and we can also say, hey, you know, what's some programs that we can get involved as parents? So that way we can teach our youth. Um, I had a teacher that she invited, you know, some of us poets and artists and, and you know, uh, uh, hip hop artists to come and actually speak to the students in her classroom. She was an English teacher. And, you know, she called it bars, bars and noble. Uh, so, but she allowed us to, to come in and, and really kind of just, you know, speak poetry to them, do hip hop to them. And what's cool about that is you don't get to see, especially, you know, people that, you know, young kids that look like us. And I'm just going to speak frankly, young kids that look like us, they don't see those opportunities of, hey, this person is rapping positive. This person has something to say, not only positive they're doing something for the community i just heard their testimony this is inspiring me to know that there's a different direction that i can take with my life that i'm not just going to end up in a jail cell or i'm not going to end up you know dead on the street because the school the prison pipeline is a real thing the mm -hmm. world that we live in and the system that we live in yes it is a design to you know uh, uh to keep people okay. to a certain way i am fully aware of that you know but i'm also fully aware that there is is a way out. And that first way out is, again, through that prayer, through that faith, but it's also doing the work and getting involved. And even if you got to post on Facebook and say, hey, are there programs out there that I can get involved in, that I can be a part of, that I can get my children involved in? I guarantee you, you're going to get uh, nine times out of 10, you're going to get some people that says, hey, I run this organization that does this. I have this, you know, um, uh, community event that does this, you know, and that's another thing that we try to do with tap in is we try to showcase community events that all ages are able to be a part of and involved in because you never know going to a community event where there is a, you know, whether it's a networking event for college admission or if say, you know, um, uh, a community event where it's just people get gathering together uh, under one roof. You never know the type of people that you're going to run into that you could talk to and say, wow, I could get my child in into this into this program. Or I can get my child into into this organization and they might not want to do it at first. So you might have to force them, but that's OK, because, you know, it's for their own good. And some just like 
was this for our own good, right? He forces, you know, he puts us in positions to where we need to trust him and rely on him because he knows. Key, that's the, a key piece. Yeah, that's a key piece, Sean. You may have to force them. Um, yeah. where, where is that that parental guidance that's mm -hmm. forced them to do that? Sean, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so uh, for me, I think, I think everything starts in home. Everything yeah. starts at home. And a lot of a lot of the issues that are going on is because these parents aren't taking the time to connect with their kids. They're yeah. not taking the time to listen to these kids and figure out what they really what, what they really like or what their struggles are going on. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, like Miss Tammy said, parents are so wrapped up in being adults. I got to get money. I got to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out how to do this. I got to go to work. They're so wrapped up in their own struggle that they ignore the kid. So now when you when you want your kid to go to these programs, your kid don't want to go to that program, but you're trying to make them do something that they don't want to do. And that's a, a parent problem. You're not connecting with your kid. So if your kid is a, is a sports player, you can't make him go to Barnes and Noble to read a book. If your kid likes reading books, you can't make him play football. That's not that's not your kid. So you got to stop generalizing kids in a in a group and realize that each kid is different, just like all of us are different. We got different likes, different and different dislikes. You're not going to do nothing you don't want to do. It's the same thing for your kid, you know, and granted, you want to protect them. But there are certain ways to, to cater to both. Um, but more so to answer your question, Ms. Tammy, I think platforms like this, because, again, we live in a digital era. Kids love mm -hmm. video games. They love YouTube. They're, they're stuck on the screen. So and what's being displayed to them is violence and murder and drugs and killing. So that's what they're mirroring, because as a parent, you don't take the time to sit down and have dinner and talk about the day. You throw the iPad at them or you let them stay in their room all day and they're mm -hmm. watching the world. Mm -hmm. And then you're confused when your kid acts in the way of the world. Right. So you we have to figure out how to penetrate this, this digital era. So a mm -hmm. call like this. If you want your son to see some some men of God and some men that are, are speaking positive, make them watch this. If you want to make them watch mm -hmm. something, watch this. And then you can go back to watching YouTube or doing whatever. Right. But you're going you're gonna to hear this because we're planting seeds. Right. I can't make it grow for you, but at least I can plant it and hopefully it'll grow. But at least you you got it. You know, you heard it. Um, so I think if, if we can penetrate these, these, these YouTube or platforms or something that caters to their learning style, then I think that's a great start. And, and maybe it's a focus on, yeah, maybe it's a focus, Kat, you can come, um, can talk, but maybe it's a focus on parents. How do we get parents the knowledge? It's a focus on them first. Yes. Uh, and then it's the children. Um, I don't know, maybe some some training for, for the parents. So I'm going to, um, we're going to close in prayer. And my heart is just, just bubbling, just overflowing with joy. Just so grateful and just all glory to God, all glory to God. Thank you, um, Sean and, and William Sean. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask um, Elder Shawnice if she would close us in prayer, just to pray over um, our young men. Thank you for your prayers today. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, if you could pray over our young uh, men and yeah. just um, close us out. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we come before you tonight, Father, and we come to say thank you, Lord God. Father God, we come as your children. We, we are coming to Abba Father tonight, Lord God. We come to say thank you, Father. We come to give your name glory. We come to give you praise tonight, God. We come to give you honor, Father God, first of all, for who you are. You are great. You are mighty. You're excellent in all your ways, oh God. Now, Father God, we come before you to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for these two young men, these mighty men of God, these men of valor, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for your hand, oh God, being upon their lives, oh God. God, we thank you, Lord God, for your protection, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for leading and guiding them down the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Now, Father God, we ask that you would just continue to cover each one of them, Lord, in the blood of Jesus, God. Lord, we ask that you would continue to put a hedge of protection around them, oh God, to keep them safe 
safe from the evil one, God. God, we just ask, oh God, on tonight that you would just give them, oh God, more godly wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight, God, in your word, in you, Father God. Lord God, we just thank you on tonight, God, that the thoughts that you have towards them, God, the plans that you have for them, God, it is for good and not for evil, God. We thank you, Lord God, that they are walking and they're expected in, God. Help them to hold on to your word, oh God. Help them to continue to trust in you and you alone, God. Your word says that some trust in men, some trust in chariots, God. But help these young men, God, to trust in you, God. Help them to rely in you, on you, oh God. Help them, Lord God, not to lean on their own understanding, yes, God. God. But help them acknowledge you, God, in everything that they do. Every decision they make, God. Help them to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, God. And then help them to know that everything else will be added unto them, God. But Lord, I pray, we pray tonight, Lord God, in the strong name of Jesus, God. Yes. Oh God, that they will seek you with all their hearts, oh God. That they will, God, they will spread the good news of Jesus Christ, God. That they will cry loud and spare not, God. That they will share the gospel. They will share Jesus without fear, God. They will go in confidence, God. They will go in the blessed assurance, God, of who they are in you and Lord, who you are in them, Jesus. God. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to build a fortified wall around them, oh God. God, Lord, we just thank you Jesus. right now, God, as they continue to put the whole armor of God on, that they will be able to stand the wiles of the enemy, oh God. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God, that your word will continue to be nigh unto their mouths, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we just thank you right now, God, that Psalms 23 is their portion, that you are their shepherd, oh God, and they shall not want. God, we bind Psalms 91 to their lives, oh God, the Psalms of protection, the Psalms that means to simply have coverage, oh God. Oh God, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. God, help them to continue to abide in your shadow, oh God. Help them to, go, to know, oh God, that you are with them, oh God. That long as they go in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, oh God, your word promises them, God, that you will never leave them nor forsake them, God. So Lord God, we also pray for every young male that's on this call, God. Even the ones that's not on this call, God. God, we pray that you would continue to keep them, oh God. Continue to be the lifter of their heads, oh God. God, we just pray that as we lift your name on high tonight, God, you said if you be lifted up, God, that you would draw all men unto you, Lord. So we're praying on tonight, God, that you would draw, oh God, all of the unsaved young yes, men, sir. oh God. Draw them unto you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we just thank you for the drawing, God. We thank you on tonight, God, for salvation, oh God. Oh God, we thank you that your word that says salvation is found in no one else, God. So we thank you that God loved them so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on them shall not perish but have everlasting life, God. So we thank you for the saved young men and we thank you for the unsaved say, um, young men, God. Lord, we give you glory on tonight. And God, we pray, Lord God, for this visionary, Lori Marcel, God. We thank you, Father God, for the vision that you've given her, God. We thank you, Father God, for being her keeper, for being the lifter of her head, God, for being her strength, oh God. We thank you want tonight, God. We thank you for the blessings, God, that you're pouring upon this ministry. We thank you, Lord God, not just for the open doors, God, but for the gates that you're opening for her. God, we thank you for the new thing that you're doing, oh God, in her life and in this ministry, God. So, Lord God, we decree and declare that this ministry is blessed, oh God. We decree and declare that the, that the sons are blessed. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the mothers who are praying and interceding and standing in the gaps for their sons, God, that they are blessed and they are strengthened. I decree and declare that no weapon that is formed against this ministry, the mothers, the young men shall mm -hmm. prosper in Jesus' name. The gates of hell shall not prevail against this ministry. In the name of Jesus, I call this ministry blessed. I call this ministry blessed in the strong name of Jesus. And God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise on tonight. God, I pray for every individual that's on this call tonight, God, that you would continue to bless and keep and strengthen them, God. We thank you for your divine presence on this call tonight, God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who came on this call and led these young men, oh God, we just give you glory. And God, Lord. we thank you. And I come against the spirit of retaliation, immediate and delayed from upon mm -hmm. these young men who mm -hmm. came and the name of Jesus. Oh God, from their hearts, oh God. I thank you that peace is their portion in the yes. name of Jesus, God. They're walking in peace. They're saturated in your peace, God. We thank you that your peace will guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. Yes. And God, we just come again to say thank you. And we love you, Father, because you first loved us. We love Jesus, our Savior. We love Holy Spirit, who's our God, and he's our help. God, we thank you for the Trinity. God, the Father, Jesus, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' precious name that we receive this prayer by faith. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus' Amen. name. Hallelujah. Amen.
Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All glory to God. All glory to God. Hallelujah. All glory to God Almighty. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Sweet sleep. Sweet sleep, everybody. Have a good night. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Bless you. Bless you. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.